Well, whenever you're at a woodworking show or you're watching somebody else using a hand plane or even a DVD, everything seems to be going right all the time and you just have these fluffy little shavings flying all over the place. But what happens when things go wrong in your own shop when you don't have somebody there to help you? So let's talk about some of the things that go wrong commonly with these tools and how to solve them. So the first thing that a lot of people have problems with is they'll come in here and they'll take this weird, wacky, inconsistent shaving. You know, that doesn't look like, like you know, what the pros get uh, when you're at the woodworking show. What could be causing this? Well, usually, it's the board. When you first begin planing a board, is it's not going to be flat. And so there are going to be sections of it that are higher, and those are going to get cut off first by the plane. So before you start saying, what's up with this plane? The thing to do is to take a few passes across the board and try to see if the shavings become more consistent or if they don't. Now, if they become more consistent like that, then things are working fine. So now instead of those little wacky crazy shavings, we're getting wider shavings that I would more expect, expect from this board. And so the first thing to do is just plane the board, and then, then, then you'll figure it out. Now, let's say that that doesn't work. You take shaving after shaving after shaving, and uh, you know it still just takes like a cut here and a cut here, and it won't take a cut here, or it'll only cut in the middle, or it'll only cut on one edge, it won't cut over here, or the shaving just, just doesn't look right. It's just not that full width. You know, what could be causing that? Now, a lot of people will say, well, the, the sole is clearly out, and you need to take it back, and you need to, you know, take it to a reference surface and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't really default back to the sole. Uh, we looked at the sole, and we dressed the sole, and I, I feel pretty confident that the sole is true on this tool. But how do you actually check it to confirm that when your, you know, when your brother-in-law comes in and tells you that that's the problem? Well, what you don't do is what I'm about to show you. What you don't do is you don't hold the plane up to a strong backlight, you don't take a straight edge, and you don't lay it on the sole and look for gaps. Because you know what? You're going to see them. And what this procedure does is it gives you a false reading. Your eye can spot about one one thousandth of an inch gap between two steel surfaces. And then um, the shiny sole is going to reflect that little beam of light and double the error. So when you take a, a, sole, a sole and you put a straight edge up on it, they're all going to look bad. Even the real premium ones are going to look out. Not bad isn't, isn't the right, right word, but, but this one I can, I can clearly see light uh, underneath the straight edge. But that's not the way to do it. The right way to do it is to clamp, gently clamp, the tool in your bench vise. Retract the iron, of course, because you don't want to uh, cut yourself and you don't want to uh, <laughs> have the uh, straight edge rocking on that. And you're going to put your straight edge. It doesn't have to be a machinist straight edge. It just has to be a straight edge that, that, that's metal and is fairly straight. And then you're going to take the, the feeler gauges that we worked with uh, earlier. And you're going to take your smallest feeler gauge, and these are my grandfather's, and the, the smallest one is, a, is three thou. And you're going to put the straight edge on there, and you're going to try to get under that straight edge with your, with your uh, feeler gauge. So you've got to hold the straight edge against the sole and then probe. So I'm holding and probing, holding and probing. So nothing in the middle. So I'm going to go over here to this end, this long edge, and see if I can get anything under there. And it's just nothing. I'm going to come over here and try that. I almost thought I got something there, but nothing. Now where I'm really concerned, as we talked before, is right here in front of the mouth. And I can't get anything under the mouth. Uh, three thousandths of an inch is, is, is perfectly fine. Now you're going to find feeler gauges, uh, mo especially modern ones, that are, are thinner uh, than three thou. But three thou is, is, is plenty flat. So I would immediately now rule out 
that the soul is the, is, is the problem here with this, with this plane. So what else could it be? Um, the next place to investigate when I have this problem is I'm going to look at my bench top itself because the bench top uh, can be warped. And if there is a hollow in your bench top and your work is thin enough, this probably won't warp very much, but you know, three quarter inch stock, half inch stock, anything less than that definitely will bounce. What will happen is you have a, a valley and then when you come here with the plane, it pushes the stock into the valley. And, uh, but the act of pushing it into the valley in your bench top denies access of the wood to the cutter. And what does that really mean? Well, in, in, in the real world, what that looks like is I'm going to come along here and I'm going to take a, a nice cut. Then as soon as I get in the middle, nothing. I'm not going to get any cut no matter what I do. And then I'm going to come to the end and I'm going to be able to take a cut. And that, what that, that's because that middle is springing down into the hollow. So if that's the thing that happens with every thin board that you put on there, I think it's time to investigate your bench top instead of the plane. And uh, I, 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 this bench top seems about fine, uh, seems fine. And it doesn't have to be a um, completely flat machinist-like surface to, uh, to get a nice shaving, but it does need to be fairly close. I've found that you know, hollows of about six thousandths of an inch on your bench top can cause you some problems. Less than that, no, it doesn't have to be a granite uh, surface plate. The other thing that can go wrong uh, if you're getting an inconsistent uh, shaving is uh, that you're putting pressure in the wrong place uh, on the tool. And when you're a beginning hand playing user, a lot of times you will be applying pressure at the wrong place at the wrong time. Let me show you the right way to do it. The right way to do it is to start the plane with the cutter slightly off the work. You put your off hand on the front knob and you press down really hard and that gives you a nice consistent start. So this is called settling the plane. So I've settled the plane on the work, this is pushing down, then I'm going to come in here with my uh, dominant hand and I'm going to push forward. I am not pushing down with, with this hand, I'm only pushing down with this hand. As I get into the work, now I am pushing down with both hands. As I approach the middle of the board, consistent pressure here, consistent downward pressure here. And then as I come to the end of the board, I can almost take my off hand off the knob because the hand on the tote is providing all the downward pressure. That is what allows the plane to take a consistent shaving and allows the plane to produce a flat surface. If you use consistent downward pressure, both at the back and at the rear, through the whole stroke, the board is going to become, you know, it's, it's going to become very, very convex. And that's what the plane wants to do. So you have to trick it. Now all that sounds like a difficult thing to remember while you're planing a board. Uh, the way I like to tell people that they can remember that, the, all those actions, is to pretend that this is like a, a big thing of ice cream, a big vat of ice cream. And what you're trying to do is, with the plane, you're trying to scoop out the middle. The, the, the sole won't let you scoop out the middle. But if you try to scoop out the middle with the tool, then you will do all those actions and those differing pressures that I just showed you. Well, there's other things to consider with uh, a plane that takes an inconsistent shaving. And uh, the next thing to look at are the frog screws. And we talked about these earlier when we de-rusted them and we lubricated them. Um, if you're taking an inconsistent shaving, take the iron out and uh, get in there with a screwdriver and really, really tighten those up because that can produce an inconsistent shaving and, and will every time. It'll, it'll make you crazy. And it will also make a chattering, chattering cut. So, so get in there and tighten all that, that stuff up and uh, that will fix a, a lot of problems that you have uh, with planes. So now we know what we're doing and how to fix it when it comes to an inconsistent shaving, but let's discuss next 
what will happen if the plane simply won't cut. And that's what we'll cover next after I get the plane adjusted back. Here's another common problem when, with hand planes is you get everything set in the tool, you go to the work, and, and the plane just won't take a shaving at all. It won't cut. Um, what could be the problem? Well, there are a few things that could be going on here. The first thing you want to do is take the lever cap off and take out the chip breaker and iron assembly and take a look at it. Uh, what happens a lot, especially at the beginning stages of learning to uh, use a hand plane, is you haven't tightened the chip breaker screw enough. I see this all the time. People will finger tighten it, and maybe they'll put a little bit of uh, English on it with a screwdriver, but that's still not enough. You need to have this thing so tight that these operate as a single unit. The problem, what happens here, what makes the plane not cut because of this, is that this is too loose. The, the plain iron adjustment dog that comes up through the hole in the chip breaker engages the chip breaker, and then you try to increase the cut. What happens? Oh, you don't move the iron, you end up moving the chip breaker forward. And so the chip breaker may not be sharp enough to cut, and, and the iron is concealed under it. So nothing happens. Or in some crazy situations, the chip breaker actually tends to make the cut, and then the shaving just looks crazy or, or horrible, and the plane is impossible to push. So loose chip breaker screws are a very common problem, and uh, tightening them is the solution when the iron won't cut. That's usually the first one. The next thing that could be making the iron fail to cut is your sharpening. Now, if we look at the bevel on, on this plane, is we have a 25 degree bevel that we ground on there uh, with sandpaper, if you remember that earlier. And then we honed with the sharpening stones a 35 degree bevel right at the tip. Now, that will work in almost every plane that I've ever picked up. However, sometimes your sharpening may be, let's just say, completely wrong. And what you've done is say you put a 40 or 45 degree secondary bevel instead of a 35 degree uh, secondary bevel. That is too steep, uh, too steep of a bevel. And the reason it's too steep of a bevel is the frog that we cleaned up holds this iron at a 45 degree angle in the tool. So if this bevel, where it's touching the work, is at 45 degrees, the plane won't cut. It might cut for an inch or so, but then there will be a fiber spring back that pushes the iron out of the work uh, behind the cut. So if you are anywhere near 40 to 45 degrees, the fiber spring back behind that iron won't, won't allow it to cut. So if the iron won't cut, and the chip breaker screw is tight, the next thing to look at is, is oh, look at, your, uh, look at your bevel. Your bevel might be too steep or too thick. Some people will say it's too thick. I say too steep. Um, so even, and if you can't measure it, then the best thing to do is just go back to the stones and resharpen, because uh, you know, sharp fix uh, just about everything. Other thing to consider is, once again, those frog screws. If the plane won't cut, the frog screws might be so loose that the frog just rides up on them when you try to engage the plane in the work. And the iron just lifts up. So everything lifts up. And you may not see this, but, but it certainly won't make a cut. So once again, if the, if the, uh, if the plane won't cut, get in there and tighten, tighten those frog screws. And then the last thing uh, is one you don't read about a lot. But boy, I, I see it happen in my own work a lot. And if we look on the uh, sole, and is more specifically the back of the mouth. Is this area back here where the screwdriver tip is touching, that a dust and pitch tends to accumulate behind the mouth a lot, especially after a lot of heavy work. And if enough dust accumulates back there, and you'd be surprised how little dust you need back there to cause a problem, but if enough dust accumulates back there, it, it's the same, it causes the same sort of problem as when you have a bevel that's too steep, is that all of that dust 
uh, denies access, uh, denies the cutter access to your work. So get in there with a rag and uh, you know, wipe out the dust, and that will usually uh, help uh, clean, clear out that problem, and you, then you can uh, get back to work. So now we know what to do if the plane's not cutting at all. But let's talk about when we take too much cut, and let's find out what happens when the plane clogs is another real common problem with beginning planers. Let's talk about clogging, and uh, clogging is, is a real common problem, and it's almost always your fault. It's not the plane's fault. The most common way to get a clog is that, first off, you let the mouth, the, the mouth fill up with shavings, and eventually, uh, you know, things get too jammed in there, and you don't allow them to come out. Uh, we have um, a nice, um, you know, bevel on the front of our chip breaker that we added in that is that is helping the shavings clear. But the other problem is uh, here. Here's the most common problem. So you take a cut, and oh, I'm not. It's hard for me to make a bad cut on here because this poplar is so easy to plane. But what happens is you run over a shaving. So you make a partial cut or something, and then you come back and you end up running over the shaving you, did, you ran over again. You can see how it didn't cut. So if you have any shavings on the board, is they'll get driven into the mouth like this. And uh, that's uh, because you didn't clear the mouth or you ran over the shaving again. So uh, you have to keep the mouth clear and you also have to keep the work clear. So let's simulate what happens here a lot when you run over your own plane shaving. So as you can see, I'm pulling back and uh, not severing the, uh, the shaving from the board. And then I come back and run over that. And then once again, it gets completely clogged there. So always take complete shavings all the way along the length of the board. Don't stop. And if you see a shaving that remains attached to the board like this, you need to, need to grab that and pull it off before you make another pass with the, uh, with the plane. The other thing you'll find is that like I was saying earlier, the chip breaker can cause a lot of problems uh, with a bench plane. And if you did not do a good job of eliminating the gap between the chip breaker and the iron, this area right here becomes a big shavings trap. So you will be planing and planing, and then the, you're not clearing the mouth, and the iron uh, you know, stops cutting, and then you clear the mouth, and you can't get all the shavings out. Well, what that usually means is that shavings have jammed up into uh, the gap between the chip breaker and the iron. So take the thing apart, and if there are indeed um, you know, shavings in this area, clear them out, then try to tighten the chip breaker screw as tight as you can, and then once again, you know, try to find out where the problem is. So you know, sight with the strong backlight, like we were doing earlier when we were tuning up the breaker. And then look between that gap uh, right here, and, uh, and I can see that this thing is, it's, it's only touching two tiny little places. So this, this little breaker assembly would be, would be bad news for anybody who wanted uh, to, to try to plane. So those are the, the places that clogs can occur most often. So always check the chip breaker and always clear those shavings out and don't run over your shaving uh, again. Then the final and last thing to check is that the mouth itself is so rough that the shavings get trapped on it when you uh, sever them from the board. And if that mouth is, is, is really rough and, and you're getting lots and lots of clogging, but it's not the chip breaker and it's not you running over those shavings again, then it's probably your mouth. Uh, you know, that either it's so tight that the, the shavings jam up or that the um, mouth aperture is so rough that uh, the, 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 sa the shavings snag on it. And the way to get that fixed is what we showed earlier when we filed the mouth of the plane, is we're gonna put it back into the bench vise, toe up, and then file that mouth and get that roughness away so that once again we've reduced the friction and the shavings can rise up in the mouth and not get clogged down there. So once you get a plane that won't clog and it cuts nicely, then you can start paying attention to the actual surface it leaves. And one of the most common surface defects 
are what we call plane tracks. And plane tracks are those little shelf-like marks all the way across the board. And those are usually caused by one of the corners of the iron digging into the work. And we're going to discuss next how to fix that and some of the def defects that look like plane tracks but are actually something else. Plane tracks are the bane of a hand plane user's existence. Well, one of the many banes, including clogging and knot cutting and blah, blah, blah. But this is something that uh, really affects the finished product. And uh, it looks terrible. And the, the goal of planes is, is to make the surface uh, flat and smooth. And you may have some gentle ripples left by the iron. But if you have a shelf like this, you really need to eliminate it. Like we discussed earlier when we were talking about setup, the most common problem is that your iron is set over too far. And so it's grabbing all on one corner and nothing over here. And that's what makes a real heavy plane track like that. So usually the solution is just as easy as extending the iron, moving it back into the center of the mouth, and then uh, confirming its position with your little block of wood. And if that happens to you over and over and over again, it keeps moving, keeps moving, that means your frog adjustment screw is too loose. So you need to tighten that up if it, if it just keeps, if it keeps losing its setting. Now, a lot of problems with plane tracks uh, actually don't relate to the iron at all. They actually relate to what we were talking about earlier. So if you're getting a lot of plane tracks, you've put the, the, the iron back in the middle of the mouth, the next thing to do is like, is do what we did when we were fixing up the sole, and that is to run your finger along the rim and make sure that the plane hasn't rammed into a screw or a nail or your planing stop or your metal dog and damaged it because that will look exactly like a plane track on your work. It'll raise a, a, a big burr here that will scrape a little corner all the way in, in your work. So feel the rim and sand it or file it off. Another real common problem, especially when you're dealing with soft woods or really sappy woods, is that you're, you'll plane a knot and that sticky knot, a little piece will break off and stick to the sole, somewhere on the sole. And uh, it looks like a plane track at first, but when you get down and get real close to it, you'll see that it's actually a, a shallow groove that is being plowed into the work by that little chip. And so you need to get in there and get in there with your rag and loosen up that chip and keep the sole lubricated so things don't stick to it. So that's a, a, another real, uh, real problem. So, um, you know, look for all those things. And uh, then lastly, the next thing to do is to sight at the iron itself and make sure that the iron hasn't been chipped. And the iron can be chipped because it's too soft or it's too hard or you ran into something metallic or you ran into a, a you know, really hard knot. And if uh, you can see a little serration or a little toothing on the iron, it's time to take it out and it's time to sharpen it. So that's how I normally deal uh, with, with plane tracks. Another way to deal with plane tracks are with beginning hand tool woodworkers is just to use sandpaper afterwards and eliminate them with sandpaper. Perfectly acceptable as you're starting to use a plane. Perfectly acceptable solution. Um, the next problem I'd like to discuss is one that happens only in some woods and also even gives uh, advanced hand planers real fits. And that is tear out, and that is, it is when the wood gets ripped up and it looks really ugly. So we're gonna be t taking a look at tear out problem next. Let's get rid of this. Let's talk about tear out, and what is it? Well, well tear out, here's a good example of it down here. Uh, tear out is when the fibers have been ripped up from the board, and the cutting action actually occurs ahead of the cutter. So it's, it's a little hard to explain, um, you know, and it's a little advanced thing to think about exactly how tear out occurs, and a lot of people argue a lot about it. But the, the end result is that you get this ugly tearing, and you need to figure out how to remove it, and you don't want to go through a bunch of theory to, to get through. You just want to eliminate it. Um, there are lots of ways to eliminate tear out. The first way to eliminate tear out is to reduce 
the projection of the iron. So instead of taking a thick shaving, take a much thinner shaving. And uh, a thinner shaving will usually uh, clear up a lot of tear out. The second thing to do is to sharpen. Uh, sharp fixes almost everything. So a really sharp iron and a really fine cut can uh, eliminate most of these, these uh, tearing, tearing problems. Uh, there are some other things you can do, and that's check the grain direction on the board. Uh, you know, this is a reverse grain board, which means like the, the grain's going this way on this part of the board and this way on this part of the board. And so, you know, you, you, you may not be able to fix a reverse grain board, but if you just have the board turned around and you're getting tear out, turn it around the other way and see if the tear out continues or not. Um, and then the last thing you can do is to really tweak the chip breaker. And the chip breaker, when really tightly set, can help eliminate a lot of tear out. And so let's take a look at what that means. Here we have a chip breaker on an iron, and this is a real you know, about a sixteenth of an inch back is a real typical setting for a bench plane that is designed for rough work. Now, for fine work, I'm going to move that chip breaker closer and closer and closer, as we discussed earlier on, on tuning chip breakers, until I could see only that real whisker, that really just sort of whisker of polish uh, on, on the back. And I might even do that by tightening it up and tapping it with a hammer or something. So if you're getting tear out, see if you can get the chip breaker even closer than it is before. And that will usually pay off uh, when, when, when you're dealing with, uh, with a, a nasty board and a bit of tear out that you can't deal with. So that takes care of most of the problems that you're going to have with your typical, typical plane. And so now what I'd like to do is get into some of the little things you can do to this plane and any other plane to take it really up to the next level where it can handle almost anything, any wood, including that African mahogany that we were dealing with at the very beginning of the DVD.